So were you surprised that uh, Rashad just got destroyed by the crowd? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, uh, I, I wrote in my column uh, that was up on Friday uh, on Yahoo Sports, and I and I said that you know, one sure way to get a crowd booing is to put his picture up on the big screen, and yeah. uh, and certainly that's you know what happened at the weigh-in today. Uh, you know, I, I think part of what Rashad was doing with all this trash talking, and everything was trying to appeal to the crowd that maybe is not fond of Rampage's you know sense of humor and and the way he carries himself, and maybe try to you know appeal to that. You know, segment of the audience. Um, you know, people say, "Hey, I'm a college-educated guy. I dress well. I speak well. I'm aware of social issues." You know, I think that's kind of uh, what he was going for. But no, I, I wasn't at all surprised that uh, you know that they booed him because even though I find Rashad to be a very good guy and a very fascinating guy, I have absolutely no problems with him. You know, it seems like the public does not like him and has not liked him for a long time so I, I wasn't surprised by him. I think uh, the fans love Rampage because he's been around a lot longer and he's more of a fight fans fighter I mean uh, fighters traditionally are gritty guys and if you know if they they speak uh, more like they're from the streets people embrace that oh I agree and I mean I think you know I, I wrote this in my column about Rashad too I mean when you look at it you know Rampage has been in bigger fights against bigger name opponents and, you know, more dramatic type fights. And, you know, I just think, you know, he's been around longer. He's had the more, you know, uh, you know, the, the bigger history for people to watch. You know, you buy the best of pride DVDs and rampages all over those. Uh, and, uh, you know, he has a history with a lot of the fans that, that Rashad just doesn't have. Um, Rashad, you know, really has had a couple real, what you would call really big fi uh, fights starting with Tito. You know, obviously he fought Forrest. Machida and Tiago Silva, um, you know, but I don't think that that compares to the kind of uh, people that Rampage has fought. You know, Shogun, who uh, Chuck, uh, which obviously Rashad fought Chuck, uh, but he fought Chuck multiple times. Uh, Shogun, Vanderlei Silva, you, know, you go up and down the line, and uh, and Rampage has had been in there with some really big names, Dan Henderson, and I think he just trumps. Uh, um, Rashad in that area, and that's kind of where the people, you know, they recognize that, they know him better than they know uh, Rashad, and he's a guy that, you know, he's a jokester, and he's a guy that people, you know, tend to like. The fans are on the side of Rampage. It sounds to me like a lot of the media, for some reason, are on the side of Rashad, or are they viewing this objectively? Um, have they been swayed somehow? Because it, it, there's a lot of momentum from the talking heads on the side of of Rashad, and I know you and I agree, uh, we actually think this fight is in the advantage of Rampage. Yeah, I, I like Rampage in the fight. Um, you know, Kenny Florian, whom I respect greatly, uh, the UFC lightweight on ESPN's MMA Live, uh, he picked Rashad. I was uh, surprised by that. Hmm. Um, I, I just think that Rampage is a bigger, stronger guy. Um, I And I believe that if... Uh, Rampage uh, connects, he's going to knock him out. Um, Rashad's been a little bit chinny throughout his career. You know, the one thing that uh, when you look at the fight, Steve, I think you say you have to be concerned. Rampage has never been the most dedicated guy. He's never spent the most amount of time in training and, you know, even out at uh, camp, you know, worrying about what he eats and worrying, you know, I mean, he was 251 pounds when he started this particular training camp. So, you know, I saw him in uh, February in um, Australia and he was smoking, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, concerned about, you know, about what he puts into his body. But, you know, he is a phenomenal athlete when, you know, when he gets himself in shape. I mean, he's one of those guys that, you know, he can do some things other people can't do. So the, the concern would be that he's got to have ring rust, that he, you know, he didn't take it seriously enough coming back. Look ready today at the weigh-in. I think he's going to be ready uh, to perform, and, you know, and I expect him to win the fight. I think Rashad closed a lot of those gaps, a lot of the motivational gaps, with all the trash talk on the show and since the show. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, uh, if uh, Rampage was going to be asleep, you know, it would have been back in uh, in March of uh, last year. But then, you know, Rashad got in his face right after the Jardine fight. He was in his face throughout the show. Uh, you know, kind of challenged him how many times on mm -hmm. the show. You know, and now throughout the promotion of this fight, you know, I mean, he called him an Uncle Tom. He also called him a Sambo. I mean, pretty uh, difficult things to say to an African-American man. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Rampage held his temper, but you know he's seething. And I think that, uh, you know, you're going to see the results of his anger in the cage. You know, 
the concern is if you're on Rampage's side, can he channel his anger and can he fight uh, Rashad uh, with a, a smart head and with the correct kind of game plan as, as, instead of just going out of his game plan and letting emotions uh, take over. If he can stick to the game plan and kind of fight with a cool head and react the way he normally would, you know, I think he's fine and I expect him to be able to do that. Okay. Let's go uh, rapid fire through some of the uh, pay-per-view undercard fights. Diego Sanchez, any trouble going back to 170 facing a guy like John Hathaway? Um, he didn't have any trouble making the weight. I think he's going to have trouble in the fight. I, I, I actually like John Hathaway in the fight. Uh, and, you know, I would like John Hathaway, you know, under a lot of circumstances. But certainly with Diego coming off the loss uh, uh, that he had, uh, I think Hathaway's a bad matchup for him. You know, I'm going to go with John Hathaway in this fight. All right, I noticed another one of the dreaded T-shirt weigh-ins, Mike Russo, who is uh, he's a bad body guy, safe to say. Todd Duffy is actually a good body guy because he's ridiculous at 6'3 and 253. Does Russo have any chance in this fight? Obviously, he takes it down and can grind things out. Do you see Duffy having trouble with takedown defense? Uh, I mean, I think Russo has a good chance. I mean, I do, you know, think Russo has a chance to win. I'm picking Duffy because I just think, you know, he's kind of a superior athlete, and I think he's one of those guys that, you know, is going to be the next in the line of Cain Velasquez, Junior Dos Santos, Shane Carwin, guys that came into the UFC, you know, had a couple of uh, fights on the uh, on the undercard or uh, on the lower end of the main card, and then, uh, you know, explodes into a, a top level fighter. I think Todd Duffy's that kind of guy, a real powerful guy. But does Russo have a chance? Absolutely, because you know he can grind that out. He's fought in pride. He's fought in the UFC before. He's a veteran guy. He's a smart guy and, and he could frustrate Todd Duffy, no doubt about it. But you know as well as I do, Steve, you know, that anybody that's trained with Duffy, anybody that's seen him raves about him. Uh Frank Mirror uh absolutely loves him and uh, can't say enough good things about him. And you know, Frank is a smart guy and know, knows his fighters. You know, I'm to take Todd Duffy by a stoppage, um, but I, you know, to answer your direct question, mm -hmm. I do say Russo has a chance. Uh, Mike Bisping and Dan Miller. I, I think Bisping is going to roll in this one. Uh, I don't think that Miller is going to get him down easily, and I think Bisping's stand up is a lot better than Miller's. Yeah, I, I mean, I think first of all that Bisping has pretty good uh, takedown defense. I mean, look, you know, he fought Matt Hamill, uh, and against the Hammer, you know, it wasn't like he was being uh, slammed on all the time. You know, he fought Rashad, same thing. You know, a very close fight. You know, both of those fights uh, could have gone either way. They were both close, controversial decisions. We know Bisping won the Matt Hamill fight, which led to a huge uproar. Uh, but yeah, so I think Bisping's takedown defense is better than you think. Um, you know, you know, I think his stand up is is very good. His Muay Thai is good. Um, I expect him to knock out Dan Miller. And the lead-in fight, I mean, is there anything we can say positive about Jason Brills? He is a decent takedown fighter, but his athleticism at this level against uh, Little Nog, I think he's going to have a tough time. Yeah, so do I. I mean, I think, you know, uh, Little Nog, uh, Antonio Rogerio Noguera is one of the elite 205-pounders. And it's amazing, you know, if you sit there and you try to rank 1 through 10, the uh, light heavyweights, it's pretty hard to do because there's a lot of really good light heavyweights. Some divisions, you know, after two or three, you know, there there aren't that many good guys. But at this division, there's a lot of them, and, and Noguera is definitely one of them. He's got big-time power, got a lot of other skills in the fight. I, I like Noguera by knockout. 